world since winning that title. <laughs> I feel like the man. And I don't know, in fashion as well. Dropped him, took him down, Khabib him and then subbed him. And I subbed the grappler as well, so I think he, Yeah, he was a high level purple bat and I got like, the submission, so I'm happy with that as well. What does that mean for you going for winning to the first? You lot of confidence, a lot of like, carry that momentum now. I worked with uh, Tom near and off every single day for that in that camp. Every day and the level, my level just went boom, working with him, so. Yeah. That's interesting because you, you're obviously at a big gym here, but the fact that you got it doing this sort of style is a testament to not just Tom, but the boxing world and everything. Do you feel like it was just everything culminating in that night? Yeah, literally, I've done everything, Kenny. I dropped him, subbed him. Um, everything literally showed all aspects of mixed martial arts and that way. So, yeah, I'm very happy with my performance. Do you feel like you're in the right? I believe that everyone, uh, everyone knows my level. I've been fighting all these killers. I've been coming up short, but in the MMA world, people, people know my level. So, what's your plan for next? Now, what do we, what do we see next for us? Put these fours on and take people out. <laughs> get some paydays. Prize fighter now. <laughs> okay. okay, so we turn it pro. Yeah. Um, do we have any kind of dates for that? Where are we going? Nah, not really. Not really. We just see what's about and. Take you know, it's no rush. How much of an influence is Tom on your career? Big influence, like since I come back from Serbia, he's worked with me a lot more, and I've just my level's gone up, and he's just a, he's a big inspiration to me. You know, he's one of the best mixed martial artists outside of the UFC. So yeah, man, he's he's been there and he's done that. So like helping me, like everything he says, I just soak it up like a sponge. So yeah. What um what would you say your best area is in mixed martial arts? Your best is if I had to put you on the spot here. Because you heard is that tough? Enough? Yeah, I don't really know. You know, back in the day, I used to just be a boxer. I used to stand, and now like I, I love everything now. So like I can't really because it's like I'm like. Are you gonna be the same way like, um, in the pros? Not in terms of your style, but in terms of like. Like, it's a business now. I was with, um, I was with, I don't know if you know, you know, Kieran Cowley, McGregor's mate. I was with him on the weekend and we were talking and he saying, yo, like, when you turn pro, it's a business now. You need to, like, you need to be smart because once that record's there now, I'm sure yeah, it's yeah. gone, it's done, like, before whoever, six hours an hour, it's one up. But now you can't be doing that now. It's a business. I need to be more professional about it. Do you have a time scale of when you want to fight? Before the years out, definitely. Before the end of the year. Yeah, Something I read in the build up to this interview when you put seasoned amateur veteran fight against 40 amateur fights with the biggest amateur title in Europe for the top prospects at Florida by Lansing and Hamfield, like representing England at the Ireland World Championship and now the real journey. Do so you like expand and explain that? It's just it interesting. It, it, talk, it talks just about your story in the amateur, but like just explain that. That's just, like, that's just like a apprenticeship story. <laughs> Apprenticeship's done, now, now I'm qualified and going to work. <laughs> I like it, could you, okay. I'm after the Emma team then, just because she liked time in Serbia, um, because we didn't actually get in the drop. Yeah, you come a day late or something. <laughs> <laughs> you come a day late, but um, it was sick, man. We had some sick memories out there. It was good to compete again. They threw me in the deep end straight away as always. They gave me that African undefeated champion, but yo, it was, uh, it was it was a good fight apart from like getting ill and that because of the weather change in the morning and that but, like it was good. Everything happened for a reason and it like it was good, it was good experience to fly out, fight abroad, fight someone from another country and it was just it was good, you know, to spend time with the team, Paul Reed, Paul Kelly, uh, yourself, Dan Casal, What other experiences did you get from that like you just mentioned African African challenge? Um, like fighting those kind of experience. What are the like things that you say that you've got from them helped you? Um I've worked I've worked with Paul Reed for about three years now before Emma was even a thing, so to go out there and have him with me as well on a fight day, um the day before the fight and everything can be around him because he's a big um he's a big part of my career as well. He's always been there for me, helps me a lot. So yeah, it was just just good times and good relationship building as well. Any final message for the people that you'll be fighting that you'd like to tell? 
Yeah. Well, I've never been in a boring fight, and now these fours are gonna come on. Um, <laughs> me and Tom think I'll be putting everyone out, so if you see me fighting, why the pay for you? Why a ticket? Because uh, these are gonna be locked and loaded, ready to go. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>